Some of you may already know me, but I am Chelsea Hanoon. I'm the Exchange and Study Abroad Coordinator for Acadia University. Uh, and we have the pleasure of Edward joining us from the University of Tours, and he is the incoming coordinator for Exchange students. So uh, Mackenzie, you'll be dealing with him a lot as you already have been, and uh, students going in future years will also have the pleasure of working with Edward. So I'll pass it over to you. So thank you so much, Chelsea. Um, hi, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm really glad to have you here today. Um, so as Chelsea told you, I am the institutional coordinator for incoming exchange students at the University of Tours. Uh, so I will be presenting the University of Tours itself, uh, France more generally, and everything you need to know in order for you to realize um, a semester abroad in France at our university. Uh, I will maybe try to... share my screen now. And if folks are going to um, tours next fall, um, there's an annual conference that happens um, for international education and it's actually happening in France next year. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to pay Edward a visit and maybe you as well, if you'll be there. It will be a pleasure of all community in France. <laughs> um, so I know this is a one hour meeting so it's a rather short amount of time for a large amount of information. So don't worry at all, not to worry, because everything I'm going to present uh, is also available directly on the official website of the University of Tours. Uh, so don't be scared if you uh, didn't pay attention to one slide or two, not to worry. Um, so once again, normally you're interested in participating today because you would like to have a semester abroad to realize a um, student mobility, uh, an international student mobility of studies uh, in France at the University of Tours. So you can do that because our two universities, so the University uh, in Canada and the University in France, have an interinstitutional agreement. So that would allow you to spend either one semester or one whole academic year at the University of Tours. Uh, is to convince you that out of all the inter um, international partnerships that your university has, you will have to choose the University of Tours as well, uh, of course, uh, because this would be a perfect way for you to experience the French way of life. So as you may already uh, know, France is one of the world's most popular destination. Uh, the city of Tours is rather central. Uh, geographically speaking, it's over here. Um, it's one hour away from Paris, which is one of the most visited cities uh, worldwide. I'll present a couple of information about Tours in the slides to follow as well. Uh, it's a rather mid-sized city in the sense that it has around 140,000 uh, inhabitants, out of which a large proportion is um, made out of students. So it's a really, it's by excellence a student city. Uh, and as I told you, it's just one hour away from from Paris uh, by TGV, which is a high um, um, high speed train. Uh, the railway system in France is rather uh, developed. I'm going to tell you everything about it afterwards. 
uh, because this is one element to take into consideration when you want to come and visit um, France more generally, but also uh, Europe, um, because this would allow you to easily um, travel throughout Europe more globally and not only in France. Uh, so the region in which the city of Tours is situated, it's called the Centre Val de Loire, so the uh, Loire Valley. Uh, it's listed in the UNESCO World Heritage uh, because of its natural interest and beauty. Uh, what I like about it is that it has uh, more than 300 kilometers of uh, cycle lanes. Uh, I actually did that this summer. I did around 250, uh, so that was nice. Not all 300? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go all the way through. Um, so what is interesting about the Centre Val de Loire is that historically uh, it's a uh, royal region. Uh, so you'll have the um, city of Amboise, you have the castles, uh, the castle of Amboise where actually Leonardo da Vinci spent his uh, last days, uh, his last years of life, uh, Chambord and Chenonceau, which, is, which are two of the most visited castles um, worldwide. Uh, culturally speaking, as we normally have an agreement in applied foreign languages um, so you are most probably uh, students that are registered in letters and languages classical letters french culture um, uh, this city would be of most interest for you because culturally speaking it's extremely rich Um, L'art de vivre à la française, uh, this would be quite interesting for you to experience uh, in the sense that French people generally, but even more so the region uh, of Central de Loire and of Tours um, uh, value the regional um, and locally produced food. Uh, and as I told you, the city of Tours is a student city and an extremely touristical city uh, during the summer. So implicitly, the architecture, the urban arch architecture is uh, adapted to this, meaning that you will have lots of uh, bars, lots of restaurants in the city center. Uh, and that is really interesting for the student life. Uh, so, although we are a relatively new um, university compared to other traditional European universities, uh, we are the biggest one in the region. Uh, we have nine faculties, so as mentioned previously, you would normally be registered in the Literature and Languages faculty um, and also you would have French classes uh, at our QFU. Uh, I will tell you everything about that in just about one minute. Uh, so these are the departments of the Literature and Languages faculty. Uh, so the Applied for Languages is a big department, a very developed department. Uh, we have extremely um, I mean, professors that are extremely adapted to international students and that interact regularly with international students that will know how to welcome you properly and what classes to suggest, what classes to consult you. OK, these are the other faculties that are not necessarily interesting for you. Uh, just so you know, even if 
you have a major in French literature or culture. Uh, you can also take a couple of other classes uh, from other faculties, depending on your time schedule, of course. So normally uh, in Europe, you would have 30 ECTS, which are um, European uh, credit transfer systems. So 30 credits, basically. Um, for a semester abroad, you would, in order for you to validate a semester abroad, you would at least need 20 uh, ECTS, so 20 credits. Um, so if potentially you see that you have classes uh, that interest you in, for example, international relations or law, uh, know that you can without any problem, register for those as well. So talking about classes, uh, I'm going to show you real quick our course catalog in English. So for example, over here, you would put the Faculty of Literature and Languages and you would have more than 200 uh, classes to choose from. Of course, this is before the mobility and throughout the process, I'm going to put you in contact with your academic coordinator and he or she will be the person to contact in order to determine what classes you have to register to. OK, so you have the description, you have the uh number of credits attributed to every class so before the mobility when you prepare your uh your departure you just have a look around see what classes interest to you or not uh and then contact the academic coordinator which will tell you if you can register to, to these ones depending on the semester that you come uh, depending on the uh, language um, proficiency as well. So if you happen to have any questions, just don't hesitate to uh, write them down in the uh, in the conversation in the chat or in the Q uh, yeah Q and A. Uh, and if or you not, can be brave and unmute yourself. <laughs> exactly. Or if not, you can, without any, without any problem, uh, just ask them directly. We've been joined by Julia. Hi, Julia. It's a pleasure of having you with us, Julia. Thank you for accepting to be my co-host for today. <laughs> Together with Chelsea, of course. Um, so this won't necessarily be applicable for you. Um, but this will. So as I told you, uh, you normally have to have 30 credits. Uh, if you're interesting, and normally you are, in learning French, uh, we have specially dedicated center for that, which is called the QFU in French and Center for Teaching French to International Students in English. Uh, depending on your language profici proficiency, so depending on your uh, linguistic level in French, uh, you would be uh, attributed to a specific class. So for example, normally in, in Europe, you would have um, levels from A1 to C2, A1 being the um, beginner level and C2 being the um, mother tongue level. Uh, for A1 and, N and A2, you would be able to take two classes, so written French and oral French, uh, which will amount to eight credits. And for B1, beginning with B1 level, uh, you would be able to take three classes, which will amount to 12 ECTS credits. So that will mean almost half of your uh, credits for the for the whole semester. 
uh, you would you will have uh, an exam to pass. And recently, the center has introduced an online exam. So you will be able to do that before your arrival in Tours. Uh, and you will get your level uh, before September or January, depending on the semester that you are uh, effectuating in France. Uh, and very important element is that being a student um, at your home university and paying the fees at your home university would imply based on the interinstitutional agreement between France and Canada and between our two universities, uh, that will mean that you won't have any fees to pay at the University of Tours. So no fees will be related to your semester abroad at the University of Tours. And the French classes proposed that at our Centre for Teaching French to International Students are free of charge as well because the Centre is actually part of the university. So it's not a private institute, but it's part of. So then that will mean that they will be free of charge. Uh, as Julia will be able to uh, confirm, there are lots of activities uh, that would facilitate your integration at the University of Tours and in Tours more generally. Um, so you, it would be impossible for you to feel alone and or to feel excluded uh, because we have lots of associations and programs that will help you uh, get in touch with the other, either the French students or the international students coming from abroad as well. Uh, so first of all, uh, we have the buddy system, um, which is a program that puts you in contact with a French person, with a French student at the University of Tours, um, and that allows you to discuss with him or with her uh, on whatever topic you would like, um, and allows you to emerge directly into the French culture through uh, the eyes of a French student. Uh, we have the sports uh, university uh, service that proposes lots of activities, uh, the cultural service as well. Uh, so you won't, in any case, uh, lack activities while you're here. So for example, um, this uh, has recently been removed. So actually, the passport doesn't exist anymore. And registrations for the um, uh, sports activities proposed by the universities are free of charge. So you can register for up to uh, three uh, sport activities per semester. I'm going to go on the web page and maybe show you directly. The campus sport. So this is the official website of uh, the sports service of the university. So as you see, there are three exceptional activities organized this week, but all the activities are over here. And depending on your interests, you have a large palette to uh, choose from. And here you actually have some photos of the last activities organized by the sports service. So this one was the uh, ice skating event. Interesting for people coming from Canada, I suppose. Uh, and lots of events organized in the month of September and October as well. Basketball, the basketball night. Um, at the very beginning of the semester for facilitating the um, arrival of new students. Uh, in the week of 4th to 
8th of September, uh, they organized a uh, discovery week. So if you don't necessarily know a sport, for example, badminton, that's not necessarily really well known or volleyball, uh, you can actually come during that week and um, uh, discover a new, a new sport. There I am playing la pétanque, which is a French sport, if you can actually call it a sport. Um, so coming back to the presentation. I think I lost it. Oh yeah, it's rather and, sensible. Yes. Is there a difference between like the orientation that happens in September and January for students? Uh, yes. So, given the fact that in September, uh, the amount of students, generally, not necessarily international exchange students or international students, but more generally, um, in September there are a lot more students arriving. Uh, there are a couple of activities proposed in September that are not necessarily proposed in January as well. Uh, but from our point of view at the International Relations Office, from our end, um, the, um, the two starts of semesters are similar. But when it comes to the university more generally, there are less activities because for French students, normally uh, the arrival is in September and not in January. But from our end at the International Relations Office, everything that a student go th goes through in September, uh, a student in January would go through the same activities and same preparation. And that's a similar experience that we have at Acadia too. So also talking about the, um, uh, the preparation and the integration uh, program, uh, Julia would be able to, to confirm uh, at the beginning of every semester, the International Relations Office uh, has a welcome conference for uh, the exchange students um, where we gather all the university services uh, so, for example, the sports service, the cultural service, the libraries, um, the CRL, which is the uh, language um, centers, the health service as well. We gather all, all of them, at least one uh, representative person in order to present you those uh, services and all the facilities that uh, are available to you as an international exchange student. So at the International Relations Office, uh, apart from the cultural program organized by the university, we organize cultural trips, uh, especially dedicated for international exchange students. Uh, so this year we organized, this semester we organized four, uh, so more or less one per one per month. I think Julia was present for only one of them and maybe let's see for the one in December. Um, that one, Julia, I hope you won't miss it because it, it it's at Chambord and uh, you will be able to see the castle decorated with Christmas decorations, which is just amazing. Uh, for the cultural trips organized this semester, I'm going to, where are they? So these are the images from the first cultural trip, uh, which was at uh, Chateau de Candé. 
uh, and the students were so these are the students a part of the students that are present here this semester uh, and they were able to so here you can see that the guide was actually um, dressed uh, in clothes that were available in medieval times more or less uh, and they had a guided visit uh, the feedback was extremely positive because they were able to emerge in activities that were uh, specific to medieval times so the region itself all the castles are interesting uh, because they tell the story of the la renaissance uh, and late medieval times nonetheless uh, so if you are a fan of these times, uh, this will be the person, the perfect place to visit. Uh, so, where are they? Over here. I'm going to come to it in just about a moment. But these are uh, the cultural trips that were organized this semester. And in January, mo most probably, uh, we'll have cultural trips that will be organized for the second semester. So Mackenzie, keep an eye on that. And I'm assuming students have to register for this. And are the trips, um, do they have a cost for students? Uh, they do have a cost for students. So uh, uh, normally, uh, there was a slide with student organizations. Uh, so there are lots of student organizations and associations at the University of Tours. The most important uh, for international students is the ESN, which is right over here. So ESN is um, the short version of the Erasmus Student Network. So even though it has Erasmus in the title, it's not exclusively dedicated to Erasmus students, but more generally to international students. Um, you can buy a card at the very beginning of the semester or throughout the semester, nonetheless, of course. Um, and with this card, you have uh, already with your normal student card, you have um, special fees and more so, even more so with the ESN card, you would have uh, a special fee uh, that it's even more uh, cheaper than the, the normal price and the student price. So for example, uh, for Le Chateau d'Amboise, for the Amboise Castle, I think the entrance is around 18 euros and for the cultural trip organized by the International Relations Office, uh, the cost would be reduced to around eight to nine euros or even 10 euros, but that includes the visit of the castle itself and also the transportation to and from the, from the castle. Quite the perk. Exactly. <laughs> um, So Julia, um, I don't actually remember if you're living in a Cruz residence, uh, but just so you know, I'm going to go through the pre-registration process as well. And you are going to be able to see that as an international student at the University of Tours, uh, you will be able to ask for a student dorm, for a place in a student dorm. Uh, because we have a special convention with the Cruz, which is actually in France a uh, different entity from the university. So it's not uh, managed by the university itself, but directly from the um, minister. So we have a special convention with them and we're able to uh, have places reserved for international exchange students. Uh, at the very beginning of the uh, pre-registration process, you would have to 
indicate if you want to live or not in a student dorm um, and you would have to fill in a form and together with the pre-registration file you would have to send it over to me and i'm gonna put you in contact with a with a course which will later on uh, send you the res um, yeah, the reservation uh, link. Uh, so Kroos as well um, offers the Kroos restaurants, which is the the university uh, the university's restaurant for students. Uh, with your student card, you will be able to eat in whatever um, restaurant throughout uh, the city of Tours because. I, um, where is it? Over here. So as you see, this is uh, no review of the city of Tours. This is the old city. Uh, this is the southern part of the city, and this is the northern part of the city. You, as international exchange students from Acadia, will have most of your classes over here. So at Tanner, at the uh, letters and languages faculty. So you will have a close restaurant over here, right next to it. But if not, depending on where you are at the moment or where you live in the city, you'll be able to eat at whatever close restaurant in the city. And is that a discount card or kind of like a, a meal plan? So normally your student card uh, also functions as a payment card. So you will have a special app for that, which is called the ISLI, which is directly connected to your student card. And that allows you to fill your student card uh, with which later on you will be able to pay at the uh, restaurant directly. And with that, you can also um, pay for prints at the uh, university library, or uh, you can rent books at the university library, and that allows you also to uh, enter in whatever campus uh, from the university. And what would be like the best way to like see what the residence looks like if they're exploring their housing options? Uh, to go to the course website directly. So you have a couple of photos in the student guide. Let's see. So you have a couple of photos in the student guide in the part that concerns uh, accommodation. So these are the rooms, but in order to have a holistic view on all the accommodations, uh, you would have to go to the their website directly. So actually, there you go. So you have the step-by-step -step, uh, process also of how to fill in the, um, the form that is needed for the housing request, for the accommodation request. And if not, you can go straight to their official website and see how the, how the accommodations look like. While we are at it, maybe I can start presenting to you the whole process um, of preparing your arrival in, in Tour. So Mackenzie already knows this by heart because she went through the process uh, beginning with September now, uh, beginning with October, sorry. Uh, because there are 
special periods. You have the academic year over here. You have the uh, calendar and the timetable. Um, so there are precise periods of time when um, Chelsea can nominate you for an international um, mobility of studies at the University of Tours. So now, uh, precisely today, was the last date of nominations. Uh, so for Mackenzie, for example, that wants to come um, in tour in September, uh, she will have up until the 24th of November to send me all the documents. So you have to respect the deadlines because otherwise you would have lots of elements that are forgotten and uh, you have difficulties uh, preparing your arrival afterwards. Uh, even more so as you are Canadian citizens, I suppose, uh, most of you, and you have to take into consideration that you have to prepare a visa, so a long stay student visa. So that is normally the most uh, important element for students that come outside of uh, the European Union. Everything is nonetheless explained on the website. So you have all the elements that have to be taken into consideration right over here. So exchange as, as an exchange students. Um, so you have the online pre-registration. Pre uh, you would beginning with the nomination the official nomination from uh, your home university, you will get an instant message from my, from, from my end, um, an acceptance message that will explain the step-by-step -step procedure um, that you have to go through in order to apply for student mobility. So it can't get easier than this. You just have to register on the Mobility Online platform, go through the process, which is extremely simple. Uh, you have 12 steps. Um, and at the end of these steps, you would have to send me over by mail two documents. So the, uh, the document that results from uh, the pre-registration on the platform. You'd have to print it out uh, to obtain the PDF and to have it signed by Chelsea and stamped by your home university and then send it over to me together with the accommodation file. Even if you want to live in a student dorm or not, uh, if you, for example, opt for a private accommodation, you just have to tick um that you opt for this uh type of uh housing and send it over to me and then i will validate your um your uh file and you will be able to continue with a visa request because at the end of the process i would give you the official uh letter of um, mobility, which confirms that you will be in France between this date and this date. Um, and that will allow you to um, uh, easily, I mean, nonetheless, uh, you have to have this document at your visa interview in order to um, uh, to demonstrate uh, that you will be in France within this period of time. Mm -hmm. And it's important be for students to stay on top of the timelines because it's a chain of events, right? They can't really move forward with the next task until the previous task is completed. Exactly, exactly. So that's why uh, we've put it in a chronological, uh, so to say, um, timeline. So first of all, you would have to take into account that uh, you have to go through the online pre-registration, then you have within the online pre-registration, you have the accommodation request, then afterwards you can ask for a visa. Um, 
and then after the the validation of your file uh, as i told you i'll put you in contact with your academic coordinator in tour in order for you to choose what classes you want to register for um, and to create your learning agreement which is the um, fundamental document of your uh, student mobility and that will allow the two universities uh, to know what classes you attended and how they might be um, uh, recognized back in your home university. So this is this is actually the document that you'll have to fill in. As simple as that, and you will have to obtain the document, uh, the signature of uh, the three concerned parties. So the student itself, so you, the um, uh, academic coordinator back in Acadia and the academic coordinator in Tour, and then send it over to me. We've talked about the uh, course catalog and also about the French classes proposed by uh, our University Center for Teaching French to Foreign Students. Uh, this would easily allow you to have the 30, the 30 CTS points um, in order to validate your semester. Um, I didn't tell you about the CRL which is uh, the Centre de Ressources Linguistiques, so the um, language center, so to say. Uh, this is extremely interesting for uh, students that are, that have a proclivity to learning languages. Um, and you have a library, you have dictionaries, you have a small cinema, um, you have movies to watch in different languages with French subtitles or with English subtitles. So this would um, be really interesting for you as uh, language students. Uh, and even more so, this will allow you to register for a class that's rather an informal class. It's just like the buddy system, if you remember. It's just a, an informal uh, exchange with a student that is interested in learning a different language. So you, for example, you will be able to register as an English speaker. Uh, let's take, for example, a person wanting to learn French uh, or Spanish, let's say Spanish, you want to learn Spanish as an English speaker. So you register for this class. If another uh, student registers for this class and he or she comes from a Spanish speaking country and has Spanish as his native, uh, his native tongue, uh, he will be able, he or she will be able to exchange with you and get the three uh, credits uh, connected to this uh, connected to this class. It's really easy. It's very simple. It only takes, I think, around twenty hours per semester, um, and it allows you to easily interact with uh, with a student that speaks another language uh, which is the most interesting way to to actually learn your language yeah fun way to get credits and meet people exactly so this all of this has to be taken into account before your mobility uh, so i am your main contact before your mobility, during your mobility, and also after your mobility in Tours. Um, 
as soon as you get to Tours, um, you'll have to pass by my office in order to finalize the registration because all you did online was the pre-registration. And once you get in Tours, uh, we will finalize together the administrative registration within your faculty. Uh, I will give you all the necessary details uh, for the academic calendar, uh, for example, this year, this semester, the classes end uh, on the 9th of December, and then you have two weeks of exams and afterwards the, the winter break and the international exchange students arriving for the second semester are expected to arrive within this week, so the 8th uh, to the 12th of January. Uh, Mackenzie, I hope you noted this down. Uh, have you already booked your flight? I have not yet. We're getting the visas done next week in Halifax. I think there's a um, global meeting uh, organized by the French consulate over there, right, in Halifax? Yeah, so um, as being part of the Atlantic provinces in Canada, we unfortunately don't have um, a French consulate. The closest one is Montreal and then Ottawa and yeah. Toronto and then Vancouver. But they've started a new service where they're bringing uh, a visiting delegate to exactly. Halifax at one of the universities so we can organize a joint day between all of the Atlantic universities to come bring our students and help and with the visa the, process. It's on the 27th. I think, Next yeah, week, 27th right? or 28th, yeah. Uh, do you happen to have any questions? I think I would love to hear from Julia about like the um, like differences or similarities between like tours and Acadia from your experience so far. Um, yeah, sure. Okay, I'm like not good at teams, so I hope that's working. Um, anyways, yeah, hi, sorry I was late. Um, I was in class. Um, uh, yeah, just kind of, I guess, recap on my like situation, my experience, whatever. Um, in my third year, uh, and I'm doing a uh, Bachelor of Arts double major French and history. So that means at Acadia, I'm in, sorry, my notes over here, so I'm looking this way. Um, my, um, Faculties are languages and literature and history and classics. And then here at the University de Tours, uh, my faculties are lettres et langues, et puis uh, les arts et sciences humaines. Uh, donc, uh, that's most of my classes are, as Edouard said, in um, tenor. And then I also have some kind of, I don't know what the direct translation is in English, but it's travaux dirigés, which are kind of like labs, but I have them for my history classes. Um, and those are kind of in like a little mini faculty about a 20 minute walk from Tanakh um, and one of my favorite walks in the city, by the way. So fun. You get to walk through like just the cutest little part of town and yeah. Um, oh, also just to answer the question from before, I am in a Kous residence. I'm in Europa, which is in Cartier de Sanitas. Um, yeah, and I'm living with a roommate. She's wonderful. She's super lovely. She's French. Um, she's in her first year. She's also doing history of art, so she's so she's in some of my classes. Um, and yeah, we have our own washer in my kitchen. It's super great. And uh, and yeah, um, I'm also here. But I don't know that. But I'm here for the year. Uh, so anyways, that's kind of a recap of like my experience. Uh, to go over similarities and differences between here and Acadia. Um, I would say that classes are run pretty similarly to Acadia, at least in my experience. My French classes at Acadia are smaller and more individualized, and you know your professor pretty well. Um, and it's very like question, answer, take up your homework together, work in like little groups, like it's similar here. Whereas history classes are more lecture format. What differ differs is those travel dirigés, which we were talking about. So you have your um, however many hour uh, history classes, most of mine are two hour lectures. And then you also have 
anywhere from two to three hours, like kind of lab type things, which are more question answer, that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, so that's different on like the class front. Additionally, something that is definitely just, I think I'd give like anybody, uh, honestly, I have friends who are in the exchange programs in other kind of European countries and they say similar things. Um, a big difference for classes and like which kind of is hard to wrap your head around is that there are no office hours. So that can be really difficult at times, especially in those history classes where you're not just with exchange students. The profs aren't catering it towards people who have like a lesser ability in French. And so it does get really difficult at times. Um, so just kind of preparation. Um, just I have friends like in Germany who have kind of like similar um, experience. So I guess that's something just really important for people to think about. Um, what else? Um, Kadia is much smaller than uh, Tour, but I'm lucky. Uh, I guess this experience as like an exchange student, um, it kind of makes it feel more similar to Acadia, if that makes sense, because you're dealing with such a smaller population than like the greater University of Tour. Um, and so that's been like really kind of like a nice little cushion. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's the school aspect of it was like not super difficult especially if you take out like history classes. History classes are probably the most difficult part of like my, my time here. But other than that, it's like, pretty similar, which is really nice. Um, and I feel like we we're really well prepared for how classes and stuff are gonna be here. Um, yeah, uh, life here, um, it's so fun. Like I've never been to Europe before, so it's like, it's like super fun, uh, it's super cool. It's like, I just the mundane things become super fun. I'm someone who like, uh, I do like spending like exploring on my own like spending a lot of time like doing little activity and this like it's perfect um to do with other people but it's also very well set up um and like it's just how I experienced it French culture in general is very well set up where you can be so independent and have a great time like the days where I just go and I find a, like a new cafe or I'm walking around the old city like so fun for me um so that's been really great I also really really love the public transportation here. I want to say that I know that's not not at all linked to the university, but a huge perk about living here. Cote de Sanitas is like 20 minutes or something away from um, Tanakh, uh, and like 30. I gotta do 30 minutes. I want to go to the other faculty just because the buses are a little bit wonky to come. But other than that, like it's it's great public transportation. I'm from Toronto, so I'm very used to public transportation. But it's so much. It feels so much safer. It's quite consistent. There's like a personal little app thing. It's called Move It um, that helps you really navigate. Um, it's like Google Maps, but more accurate and specifically catered to um, uh, tools like public transport. Um, yeah, that's a huge plus. Um, yeah, and I guess um, we were talking before about kind of going over how like my process was. So I guess I'll just go over that right, right now. Um, so I'll start with what was most helpful for me throughout this process. Number one would be the guide, like the student guide. I think that like the best thing that I did throughout this process was read it all and then read it again and then read it a third time, make my list, like make a checklist or whatever it is. Acadia also sends out a bunch of checklists, packing lists, um, budgeting, things like that. Everyone to contact at Acadia, but just really combining all those lists of what is gonna work for you, super helpful. Following that guide, super helpful. Um, the only thing was that the student guide for 2023 and 2024 didn't get, I didn't have access to it until a little bit later. And so it was great that I had a point of contact as well to like direct all my questions to. So that would be number two most helpful things. Once I'm here, once I got here still with the guide and still kind of with the incoming mobility kind of website, your little like dossier, like it's great. Um, and then uh, another thing was the welcome conference that was mentioned earlier. That was great. That was very, um, that was well, we were given breakfast before. It was like so fun. Um, and it was just well orchestrated and it's just easier. There's so much information being thrown at you. And so this, uh, presentation that was like, they were, they were just talking to you. They were just kind of just having, it was a presentation, but they were just having a conversation with you with a little presentation on the side. It was, it was, it was that was really, really helpful for me. Um, and then finally, uh, my academic advisor, who's now also one of my profs, um, Karin Berberi, I think that's how you say her last name, I'm not sure. Um, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So quick at responding, super helpful. Um, things that 
that aren't necessarily in her job description. She was super helpful in directing me when I was just confused. Um, yeah, so those are the top things that helped me the most. Um, I guess now I'll talk about some things that I had difficulties with and how I was able to circumvent them or overcome them or just get through them. Um, number one would be the timeline that we talked about earlier. I really, I started off so strong and then kind of mid-summer, I tailored off quite a bit and had some issues with my visa as a result. Um, and so that was really difficult and I'm really grateful that I was able to get here. I'm really grateful that everything kind of worked out the way that it did, but just as everybody said a million times, like, I don't know if an extra person saying it will help people, but it's so important to be on top of your timeline for that logistical stuff because there are so many hidden processes that you have to do. You think that you will like click onto the visa website or click onto whatever it is and then you're done that and you've submitted your like little dossier for that, but it takes you to another site. Like you have to do it as soon as possible. Um, yeah. And the way that I kind of was able to overcome that is really communication. Communication has been such a huge thing for me. Um, people here want to help. Like when I was coming, I was like freaking out because my, my, uh, my logement, so in English, like my, my dorm, um, I was going to be later than I expected, but people, they want you here. They want you to help. You have to just talk to them. And it's, um, like a little bit annoying when like things aren't going like your way or the way you want it to go. But that was the biggest thing for kind of figuring out my timeline. Um, second thing that was difficult, as I mentioned before, are my classes. Um, yeah, my French classes, absolutely love them. They're great. I love my history classes as well, but history is hard enough for me in English because there's so much information and it is very quick lecture style class. Then you add on that, like my uh, level level and like in French is only B2. Um, it's, it's definitely really hard. So that was definitely one of my biggest kind of difficulties. Um, in addition to the fact that uh, I had some issues planning my classes in regards to the ECTs because when you submit to classes that you want to take, you're not seeing the timetable. And so sometimes it doesn't work. Anyway, so it just took me forever to figure that out. But um, again, the way that I overcame that was talking to Karine and um, I really my pros whenever you can. Um, and also just following by example. You have to follow by example. Um, for example, at Acadia, at least in my experience, um, a lot of the classes that profs encourage you to be writing down your notes and whatnot, and you're allowed to take pictures of the board. My experience here is that that's not the case. Everyone is very frantically scrambling on the computer, getting stuff down for history classes, um, and it's impolite to take pictures of the board. And um, most times in history classes, the, the messages on the board are not, or like the little notes on the board are very much only useful to you at the moment. Um, so really following by example, especially in those classes where you're with French students, just they, they've been doing this process of their schooling all their lives. You have to follow them is what I've found to be helpful. Um, the next difficulty, I don't even know if I want to put this as a difficulty because it's kind of been fun to sort it out, but it's just kind of cultural differences. So I'm sure it's the same for students coming into Acadia, but because um, the University Tool has so many people coming from so many different countries with different customs and cultures and like, um, like practices, I guess, cultural practices. Um, it's hard for um, the incoming team to kind of prepare you for every little thing that's going to be different because they don't know what it's like in your country. And and mostly people are French. And so they're used to kind of the French culture and, they, and this is normal and it's kind of going to become normal to you. But it's just kind of those little things like um, how you, sorry, it's like how you act in a restaurant or how you act in a bakery or whatever it is um, or crossing the street or, um just things like that where it's like you weren't expecting it um the table du rouge is another good example um having to write on your computer rather than by paper another good example um there's just things that i guess i put them in the difficulty category but it was kind of really fun to like kind of figure it out i'm like oh, i'm still french like it's it's a nice little part of the journey but it is definitely a little bit confusing initially um so i guess just don't be wary of it but be prepared um, for it. And then finally, um, the issue of contact. I find that because the, it's not very drastic, it's only five hours from uh, to from here to Acadia and six hours from here to where I'm from. Um, so it's not drastic, but the work day does definitely differ a lot, especially because um, there's like the pause in the middle of the day. Um, so you do sometimes feel quite um, like alone because 
it's it's the middle of the night at Acadia or it's the middle of the night here when you're trying to con contact your professors or whatever it is and there's no office hours so the professors aren't as keen to check their emails um, and things like that so I think that um, the way that I overcame that person it's a personal thing because it really does affect like your mental um, but for me it was just that you are able to it's hard, but it's like built up like mental fortification, if that makes sense. Like you have to go and look for your own resources. You have to, uh, oftentimes you have to step back, take a minute and then, and then kind of think of a reweight, like another way to attack the problem. Um, and more times than not, it's better to go in person, which is what I really learned. Um, and that's that. Uh, in terms of, I guess the last thing that I would say, or sorry, not last, not last thing, one, two more things. Um, uh, the kind of, facilities that were mentioned before. I unfortunately haven't taken advantage of a lot of the facilities that are offered here, but I know I have lots of friends who have and are loving it. And I had some issues with my student card. And so that prohibited me from doing some things with SUOPS and um, with the CRED and Nature's Comes Up. But um, I'm really looking forward to doing those uh, next semester. Um, what I have been able to take advantage of are the uh, the doctors and the like medical kind of area uh, tool. I found that really quick response, very helpful, um, things like that. And as well as advising, those have been my biggest things. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to do, uh, to participate in some more SWAPS activities next semester. Um, I live really literally not right next to the pool. So I'm really excited to kind of get on that. Um, and I also have been in contact with the people at CRL, and so I'm going to be doing that as well next semester. It's going to be great, and I'm excited for it, and I think that everybody should, if that kind of feels right for you, I think that you should really give it a whirl. And yeah, um, just to wrap it up, I guess overall life here, um, I'll say like my first impressions, city is so pretty. I'm looking out my window just here. City is the city is so pretty. Um, I was so excited when I found out Tanakh was right on the river. Um, in between your classes, it's a great place to just like go and walk and sit and whatever it is. Um, Old City is beautiful, obviously. Um, the Botanical Gardens is great. Um, it's just, it's a beautiful city. It's a beautiful place to be. Um, yeah, it's really nice. Um, first impressions of University of Tour itself, super friendly. You just have to like talk, you have to, um, it's this being here has helped me grow up a lot um, because you have to initiate it, but it's so rewarding to initiate that contact with people because they're so ready to help you and they're really trying. They're just they're just there for your best interest. Um, and so it's really rewarding and it does it does help you um, improve your communication skills, especially because you're doing it on French. Um, and yeah. Um, Life overall, life is good. Life is it's hard. It definitely it's a hard it's a hard thing to experience. Um, you know, language barriers are hard, classes are hard, schedule is hard, all that good stuff. And you miss home and everything, but it is so it's it's I don't know how else to put it, it's really just rewarding. Um I just it's I've I've always liked learning French, but just being here and seeing how fast it like improved. Um, I'm no by no means an expert. I'm by no means I completely fluent or anything, but um, it's just really gratifying to be able to a experience this as such like a an opportunity to to be in Europe, to be in France, to be in Tours, um, and to be doing school all at the same time. Um, but also just for future me and for me when I return to Acadia and I'll be doing my French classes there and it'll be easier and more fun and I, it'll just give me a time to reflect on what I've uh, been doing here. Um, yeah, having a good time um, despite, I feel like I was a little bit negative. I don't mean to be that way, it's great. I just wanna like forewarn, um, but yeah, having a great time. Uh, would recommend if people feel like they're up for a challenge and that this is right for them. And number one, if they really want to improve like their language, like if they're they're French, for example, if you're here in Tours, um, would recommend. And I guess that's my thoughts. So yeah. Julia, I'm so glad you attended this session. It, that was very really insightful. Uh, and I think it's so realistic for people to like to know like the challenges to expect because it shouldn't deter them, it, but it's helpful to prepare like mentally for that. Um, I'm sure Mackenzie will have some follow up questions and I do um, as well. Um, so I was wondering, like, 
obviously you're there for the full academic year. Would you like recommend that to other students or like would you have chose like one semester? Um, honestly, I think I think improvement, I think it really depends on uh, the type of person you are, if that makes sense, like how you feel about being so far away from home, because obviously that's like a huge part of um, the exchange in general. Um, and when I was first coming, I was only considering the one semester people because I was like, oh, like I want to be back home with my friends, whatever, whatever. Um, people were like, oh, that's not what it's about. It is kind of what it's about. Um, it's really hard to enjoy your time here. And, you know, on those rough weeks, like this room, this is my friends. And that's like, it's totally fine. And everybody needs those breaks. But you want to make sure that you are profiting the most you can off of this opportunity because I, I can't stress how much it's a crazy opportunity that I'm able to do this um, and that Mackenzie's going to be able to do this and and whatever it is. Um, but I really I really think you have to trust your gut and try not to let other people um, kind of sway that based on what they would do because it's very much a personal decision. I will say, though, I think that comfort wise, uh, it's better things that I've done this semester that I'm not so happy with or that experience that I've had that I'm like Ugh, would rather not do again I'm really excited for the fresh start next semester especially if I can go home and reset and everything um it is nice to be able to be able to settle down if that makes sense and be comfortable here and I don't know that I would have that same experience if I was only here for a one semester so there are different things but I think it's definitely a personal um decision for me uh I like that I'm here the full year um, but it's very, it's very much a personal decision in my opinion. Yeah, that's so valid. Um, the other thing I was wondering was about your history classes. So when um, Edward was pre presenting about the courses, they, there are some available in English and French. Were there English courses available in history or only in French? Or what was your choice to do like all French classes? Um, so how it works for me is that uh, there were lots of availabilities. It's just that my um, uh, Kuefer classes, like my French classes, were um, one of one of the options got taken away. And then just the scheduling wise, it didn't exactly work out that way, which is why I'm in all English classes. But also when I was meeting with Karin, she was like, okay, like, listen, like, here's the option. You can have an English class and that's totally fine. Like, nobody's going to fault you for that. And I have friends in the English class who absolutely love it, but it is going to make you, it's going to be very hard, but it's going to make your French better if you are in a French history class. And it has. Um, and so I think that if I were to do it again and maybe next semester, if it's an option, I would take one English class just so that I have kind of that security. Um, but yeah, for me, it really depended on my schedule just because um Again, this is like really a special case scenario because my friends did not have this problem with their scheduling. But like I have only just kind of sorted out my schedule within the last month and it's November. So like it's it, it was kind of just more challenging that way. Um, but yes, yeah, sorry to I guess I kind of derailed the question. But yes, there are options in English. Um, that was just why I ended up taking all of mine in French. That's really helpful to know. Thank you. Mackenzie, did you have any questions for Julia? I know you've asked plenty throughout the process. Yeah, I just had one question um, mostly, and it might depend just because you are from Toronto and I'm from a smaller town. Um, but did you find um, University Tour to be very overwhelming where it's so much bigger than Acadia? Um, honestly, it was overwhelming initially just because um, at Acadia, you know how we're given like the, the map with all the numbers or whatever um, of like the BAC and Huggins and all that good stuff. Um, they're more on the wall here. So I was so lost and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, and so I ended up just emailing Karine and being like, hey, I don't know what's going on. And she like sent me a whole list. So you're not sent it automatically. But again, it's really just about asking, I guess. Oh, overwhelmed. I wasn't overwhelmed because... I think that, especially with the French classes, they're so understanding, um, especially with your small classes and your French classes, they're so understanding. They understand that you're like, <laughs> you're walking blind here um, until you kind of get yourself, get yourself up on your feet and whatever. Um, so not overwhelmed, but it was definitely quite confusing for a while. Um, 
more so in Tanakh than in um, Fromont, which is the other faculty. Um, but it's kind of, it's not, it's bigger than the BAC, but it's not that much bigger. Like it's just, it's a little confusing because the none of the stairs go up all the way, but um, it's just like the BAC where you have to like find what's what and whatever that classroom is in the BAC um, beside the little cafeteria where like the first time you find it, you're like, oh, there it is. Like, it's just one of those. Um, yeah. And how about the, like the city itself? Um, like, is city it like, itself? To, like Halifax or like, what would you describe as like the experience? Um, I think that overall it's really accessible by, um, by the trams and by the buses, um, like you can go out to the, the IKEA or um, the Carrefour or whatever super easily, um, which is really nice. Uh, so even out there is totally fine. Around the city, also super easy. I think the only thing is that um, to get into kind of the old town where most of the cafes are and at night where most like the people are just out and about you do have to walk but it's not really that big of a deal and honestly it's a really nice walk once you figure it out so um it's definitely not bad uh I think I still am out kind of with google maps sometimes being like I don't know where I'm going but um it's really just in those small kind of quartiers that are less um like it's cobblestone road so there's not going to be buses or things like that um but overall I think it's pretty accessible um definitely much much bigger than wolf um definitely many more places to go, but also many more things to kind of experience. But it does take, well, I think I did in like, I was with classes and everything. I've done, I've seen everything in like three weeks. Like it does take like quite a bit of time and you're not going to see everything. Um, but in order to navigate and feel kind of comfortable, like, okay, these are my regular spots. It's, especially by the tram, quite easy. I don't know if that was kind of a rambling answer. I don't know if that made any sense, but yeah. It's kind of exciting to know that you like won't see everything. It gives you a reason to come back and visit friends that you meet. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like nice, like, I don't know. It's it's just like good to like, even if you don't see everything, like you have your spots. Um, and yeah. I had a follow up question that I'm kind of blanking on it now. Um, oh, does do you get like a transit pass with your like student account with tours or or how is how does that process work? Yeah, so you have I have it here. Um, you can buy these like little cards that look like this before you get your student card, just because it takes a minute to get all that kind of stuff sorted out. Um, and so basically, what these has, and whenever my friends come visit me, they get these too. You have ten um, kind of rides on the on the public transportation. They have a transfer time, I think, of like an hour, an hour and a half, or something like that. So it is a decent amount of time, which is super helpful um and then once you get in your student card you're able to get um kind of the app and you ha do have a discounted um same transfer time but discounted um uh i guess cost this uh, i think is 14 euros or something like that anywhere between 10 to 14 euros i forget um but yeah and then you just tap on you don't have to tap off which is nice but you're you're just tapping on on the on the bus or the tram or whatever it is um and Oh, I forgot to mention this. It's also really uh, the campus and and all the all the residences that I've been to at least are really accessible to the um, gar the, the train station um, uh, of Tours. And then from Tours, every like twenty half twenty minutes, half an hour, you go it goes to Saint Pierre de Cor, which goes kind of anywhere in Europe, Euro rail wise. So it's really accessible um, for travel, which is really nice, especially when we have our reading week. Um, and if your classes like mine end up where I'm done class at 4 p.m. on a Friday. So um, typically I'm going to Paris tomorrow to visit my cousin, but like typically I could go tonight if I wanted to because it's so accessible. Um, so that's another plus transportation wise and just getting around wise. Yeah, that's always an exciting part, the non-academic experiences and being so central in Europe, too, is a really, really great perk. Mm -hmm. uh, the other question I had is, like, did you have to bring, like, bedding for your accommodation or how did that process work for you? Yeah, so what happens is Kus can is offers these kits and there's one for the kitchen and the cleaning and uh, like your bed. 
Um, so they gave, so I got all three of them and they give you uh, some cleaning supplies. So a mop, a little brush, um, I can't remember quite else, but things of that nature. Um, for your bedding, you get a blanket and a pair of sheets and a pillow. And then for the kitchen, it was a saucepan, a frying pan, a cup, um, the exchange, per, the exchange like incoming mobility also gets you like a little cup in there, um, kind of welcoming package as well. Um, and then uh, some utensils. I did find though, especially when I had some friends visit me recently and I went, okay, I need more, I need more stuff. So I did have to go out and get um, more, what's the word? Oh, cutlery. Um, so you do need to buy some stuff on your own, but it does really help kickstart um, your kind of life here and does make the room feel a little bit more like homey. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention also, which is a difference um, from that I just didn't know about, I was talking to my roommate and she's like, yeah, this is normal. Um, there is very minimal washing machines here. So it's just how this is connected is with that one pair of like sheets and your blanket and all your stuff. You just have to be very critical because there was, there's one washing machine in my building, um, but Europa has uh, like four buildings and we all use the one. Um, and so it's like, it's like two of tower having one washing machine. So it's crazy, but just, it's important to keep that in mind. Um, especially cause this week ours was broken. So just, I've been thinking about getting a new pair of sheets. I think that if you're only here for one semester, you're probably fine, but, um, just, just something to keep in mind. The kits are great, but you just have to kind of feel out what you're going to need personally and what works well for your schedule, um, and your accommodation. Yeah, at least you know you have sheets when you land because I know after traveling all day to get there, it's nice to at least be able to crash and not have to yeah. make up your bed and everything or go to the store. Yeah, the kits are great. They're really, really helpful. Yeah, and I know there are like some things that like if you want to like wash like clothes or something in like the sink, they have like devices and little <laughs> travel kits like that too. So that's always an option. Yeah, definitely not the end of the world. Just like a little like fun little France park. I was like, oh, I don't remember. I didn't, didn't expect this, but here we are. So if I may, yeah. there, there were lots of elements that were uh, brought into our attention um, and I just wanted to follow up on, in, on, on, some, uh, on some points. Um, so of course, I completely agree with uh, Julia, communication is the key. So there are, there's no such thing as uh, too, ma too many questions or silly questions, just if you if a process doesn't seem um, clear enough for you, just ask the question. Uh, when it comes to administrative uh, stuff, I will be your main contact. And then when it comes to academia, so pedagogy, uh, then your academic coordinator would be your uh, your main contact. Uh, but just don't hesitate to write to me or call me or just pop by my office and then I will be able to uh, to sort out the situation, whatever it may be. Um, transportation is actually a, um, a subject that is close to my heart because a uh, tour is such a um, uh, well designed city. Uh, France in general and Europe in general, nonetheless. Um, so actually, uh, I bike in Tour everywhere. So if you actually have a bike, uh, you may go from point A to point B, uh, whatever. How geographically it doesn't it doesn't necessarily uh, matter because Tour is a mid-sized city. Uh, so if uh, you go from point A from to point B, but at the extremes of the city, it won't take you more than 20 minutes by bike. Um, and are there good so places for students to rent bikes or is there like kind of like a it, student buy exactly. and sell? So, uh, so I've put three links in the conversation. So the first one is Fil Bleu, which is the, um, uh, the public transportation system in Tours. Um, to follow up the the discussion you had with Julia, uh, you actually students actually have uh, the possibility of having a monthly pass. Uh, so the monthly pass is twenty three euros per month, uh, and it gives you a limited a limited amount of um, uh, travels. Uh, 
so it doesn't actually matter um, the 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 exchange time doesn't actually matter. Um, so as soon as you have your student card, or even if you're under 25, then you can directly uh, apply for the for the monthly pass. Uh, so this will allow you to take whatever bus, whatever tram um, within the city. And there is the city um, uh, the city bikes that you can uh, that you can borrow. Uh, so throughout the semester, it's just perfect for for uh, international students because you can um, borrow a bike for at least three months. So if you borrow a bike from the from the from the city, you have to uh, borrow it for at least three months, and it only costs you eight euros per month if you don't have the monthly pass. Uh, and if you have the monthly pass, it only costs you five euros. So throughout the semester, if you're here for uh, four to five months, then if you have the monthly pass, it would cost you 20 euros to have a bike in tour. And that's just brilliant. Uh, and I also put the SNCF. SNCF is um, Société Nationale de Chemin de Fer Français. Uh, so that's basically the um, website where you can find all the trains throughout, uh, throughout France. Uh, you have lots of um, uh, abonnement, uh, lots of uh, yeah, opportunities nonetheless. You have regional passes, you have national passes. So for people under 28, you have a brilliant pass uh, that will allow you to, for 79 euros per month, it will allow you to take any TGV, so any high speed train uh, throughout France. So if you're here for uh, a semester or for one academic year, this would be ideal for you to discover the um, to discover France in its in its uh, uh, globality. Uh, again, for the kits, uh, so indeed you have the kits that um, the Cruz uh, offers. Uh, normally, before the COVID, uh, there were thrift shops organized uh, with the international exchange students. Um, we haven't been able to relaunch that. Uh, after COVID, but it's uh, in uh, a development, it's under development for the following years. Uh, so the idea behind this is uh, that students that go away uh, leave their unwanted uh, or just stuff that they can't carry around or they don't find it necessary to carry around back home uh, and they just want to offer them uh, to students coming in uh, the next semester. Uh, so that would be like a perfect circular economy. Um, yeah, and once again, communication is the key um, for for different practices uh, and for the cultural impact. Um, it's that's why it's essential or not maybe not essential but it's a good idea to register for the buddy system because you can actually exchange with a french student uh, and ask him or her about all the cultural differences tell him or her uh, how it's going on in uh, in canada and acadia and ask him or her if it's the same process in france uh, in order for you not to have uh, a big cultural impact um once again, just communicate this. This is a key. If you have questions, to just don't hesitate to ask them. Um, we'll be more than happy to uh, to help you with everything. Perfect. Well, I thank you both, Edward and Julia, for putting on this presentation. It was probably one of the, our most informative <laughs> from an administrative side and a student side. So I really, really appreciate that, and I'm sure. Uh, Mackenzie will be reaching out to both of you uh, as she prepares to actually fly out to France uh, within the next couple of months. With a great pleasure.